Hey guys, alright, let's go ahead and talk about some uh, limits here with absolute values. So our example here is going to be limit as x approaches 2 of the absolute value of x minus 2 divided by x minus 2. So as always, the first thing we should try is direct substitution. Uh, and what happens when we do that? Well on the top, uh, put in the 2 for the x and we have 2 minus 2, which is 0. Absolute value of 0 is still 0. So we have 0 on the top. What happens on the bottom? Uh, 2 minus 2 is 0. So we end up with 0 over 0, which as usual makes us sad. Uh, so we think, okay, 0 over 0, is there something we could factor? And we look at this, no, not really, there's really no way we can factor that. Uh, and what's different here is we have the absolute value now. So if you try direct substitution and you get 0 over 0, and you have an absolute value here, uh, kind of like this, then what you should do is well, something different. So let's go ahead and talk about what to do. So before we do that, we need to uh, remember something here. So let's recall the definition of the absolute value function. So absolute value of x equals what? It equals just plain old x if uh, x is greater than or equal to 0. And it's negative x if x is less than 0. All right. So that's the absolute value of x. Now remember, um, this doesn't apply to just x, this applies to anything. So instead of x, 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 you can have anything here you want. Okay. Um, so instead of x, what do we have in our case? We have x minus 2. So if we take this definition and apply it to x minus 2, then what we'll have is this. Absolute value of x minus 2 equals x minus 2 if x minus 2 is bigger than 0. And it's negative x minus 2 if x minus 2 is less than 0, right? All right, so that's all fine and dandy there, but uh, let's go ahead and rewrite this like this. Um, absolute value of x minus 2 equals x minus 2. If, if, x, if x minus 2 is bigger than or equal to 0, what can we say about x? Well, we could say that x is bigger than or equal to 2, all right? And here, for the second piece, we have negative quantity x minus 2. Let's go ahead and just leave it like that. Um, and here, x minus 2 less than 0. What does that mean about x? Well, that means x is less than 2. Okay. All right. So now we could use this here. Uh, what is this? So this is a piecewise function, just like we had in uh, the last couple of videos. So now that we know how to deal with piecewise functions, uh, we can handle this absolute value function here. So let's go ahead and use this to do that. Um, so remember how we handle piecewise functions. Uh, first we look, okay, 2 is at a point where the function breaks into pieces, and yeah, it is. So we're going to have to split this up into a couple pieces here. So let's go ahead and do that here. Um, we need to do the one-hand limits. So let's go ahead and do the left-hand limit first. So limit as x approaches 2 from the left of the absolute value of x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 equals what? Okay, well um, here x is coming into 2 from the left so that means x is always less than 2. Now if x is less than 2 which part of the absolute value are we using? Well we're going to come back over here and if x is less than 2 then we're using this part here. So what we have is negative quantity x minus 2. All right. So really this is a limit, don't forget the limit, as x goes to 2 from the left of negative quantity x minus 2. And on the bottom we still have just the x minus 2 just kind of hanging out there, not doing much. All right. Let's go ahead and put brackets around this now. We've got a lot of minus signs floating around here. Okay, so limit as x comes to 2 from the left of this quantity, uh, negative quantity x minus 2 divided by x minus 2. So now we can um, simplify this a little bit and then do direct substitution. So if we simplify that, what happens? Well, on the top we have negative x minus 2 and on the bottom just x minus 2. So these are going to cancel and what we're left with is negative 1 on the top and a 1 on the bottom. So really, this is the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of negative 1. And remember, uh, limits of a constant is just that same constant no matter where x is going. Okay? So this is negative 1. So that's the left-hand limit. All right. What about the right-hand limit? 
Well, for the right-hand limit, we have limits as x approaches 2 from the right of absolute value of x minus 2 over x minus 2. All right. So now we see, okay, x is coming into 2 from the right. Now, because x approaches 2 from the right, that means x is always larger than 2. And if x is always larger than 2, which piece of the absolute value do we use? Well, here, x is larger than 2, so we're going to use this first piece here. Okay? And we just completely ignore the second piece now. So we're just going to uh, do x minus 2 here. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of x minus 2. And then on the bottom, we still just have that same x minus 2 here. Okay? So now we have that. Um, now we're just going to simplify and evaluate. So x minus 2 divided by x minus 2, that's just 1. So this is the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of 1. And remember, limits of a constant is always just that constant, no matter where x or whatever the variable, no matter where it's going. All right? So the left-hand limit is negative 1. The right-hand limit is positive 1. So the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit are not the same thing, which means the two-sided limit doesn't exist. All right. So that's our final answer for this example, is it doesn't exist. So that's how to deal with this kind of thing uh, algebraically. If we were to look at the graph of this function real quick, let's go ahead and do that. Um, the answer would be much easier to obtain just straight from the graph. So what this looks like graphically is, just real quick, x-axis, y-axis. Um, here's the point 2. This will be negative 1. This will be positive 1. All right. Now what this function looks like is a uh, hole over here. Goes to the left here. And a hole up here and goes to the right. Okay, so the absolute value of x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 looks like this if we graph it. And we see uh, as x comes into 2 from the left, where does it look like y is going? It looks like y is going to negative 1, or in other words, staying at negative 1. And if we come into uh, x equals 2 from the right, where does it look like y is going? Well, it looks like y is just going to stay at positive 1. Okay? And that's what we found algebraically here. And we can see because the left limit and the right limit are different, uh, the two-sided limit doesn't exist. Okay.